My family's been coming here since the 1950s. My great-grandfather bought a cottage on the, the uh, bay side. And uh, while I grew up in Florida, we would come up every summer and spend three months from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Where we were on the bay, we actually lost about 100 feet of waterfront. And he was probably the first person or one of the first people to put a jetty in and seawalls in an attempt to save the island. Now, when Thomas Jefferson drew the island, um, he said he thought the island would be gone in about 25 years because of the erosion. So it's been eroding and moving probably back and forth for several, you know, thousands of years probably. But when we bought this, the shoreline gradually eroded over the 10, 20 years. So when we built this, that became sort of an issue we had to deal with. The Center for Coastal Resource Management is a group here at VEMS that specializes in research that is addressed specifically at answering management questions that are issues for the state or for the residents who live in the state. So one of the things that we try to do at CCRM is to work with um, local people to help them make really good decisions for their shoreline. Um, and so that can both be where you have stabilization issues, um, but it's also where there are sea level rise issues. And so what we want to do is help bring the understanding of what that means for the property, and then what are the ways that this can be addressed that also maintain the integrity of the natural system. We, uh, about 30 years ago, bought another house at this end of the island and it was sort of a New England Cape Cod style and and we used that for a number of years and then about 10 years ago it was sort of getting old and creaky and the bathrooms didn't work so we tore that down and uh, built this house. When we rebuilt the house we really wanted to address the shoreline issues at the time we just had riprap on the shoreline and so I had heard Carl Hirschner speak since I was on the VIMS Foundation Board at the time and realized that VIMS had a lot of expertise in shoreline management. And so they were very helpful in making recommendations. We removed the riprap and then built these rock mounds that are out here and brought sand in. And they made recommendations around that and then helped us with the permitting process. Okay, so VIMS connection with Rob and McKella began probably 11 years ago when they wanted to redesign their house, rebuild their house, and rework the shoreline. We have a shoreline study group that actually did the design for the breakwaters and the tombolos that now are the major part of their shoreline. From us, this is really important because one of the things that we're always concerned about is the ability of the shoreline to continue to function as a natural system and the type of management that was typical in this area, the riprap shoreline, which is just rock piled against the shoreline to stabilize it. What that does is sort of isolate the marsh behind it and the uplands from the water, preventing some of the natural ecological connections which make that shoreline valuable in the system. And instead of that, what we're now recommending is living shorelines. It's a uh, shoreline practice where there is vegetation that has direct connection to the water. And so this is a gap uh, breakwater system. It is designed specifically with very large rocks, which are oriented into the prevailing winds and the prevailing wave energy. And it is designed, as you can see behind me, with a gap between the major rock piles. And the size of that space actually has an effect on waves coming in and creates a very stable shoreline feature. So this little cove here will basically remain that way even during storm events because waves hitting this area are diffracted and the energy is spread out so that you don't get erosion carrying the sand away from the area. And then if it all works well, those spits will become vegetated naturally. And so we have grasses and trees and shrubs now occupying the area that was just bare sand when all of this was put in. We try to be responsive to any requests we have. We are likely to help people look through maps and um, find their house and explain to them what those maps mean and how 
how that works. Now, the other thing we do have that, again, is not specific to a property, but we have a um, collection of adaptation measures that people have used, and it has pictures of them, and it has costs associated with them. And so you can see what are things you can do to help protect your property. What we've realized is FIMS is a great resource for not just um, the Bay and Virginia, but for the, for the, for the country and, and really kind of globally. But it's also a great example of being able to take science and research and apply it to something real. And for us, it's, it's made a difference.